It's a gross negligence to lead a wife to believe that none of those relational verses, verses apply to marriage. It's not different for marriage. It's applied different in marriage. It's harder to do in marriage, much harder. But every one of those verses on friendship and relationships, it still applies. No one, I mean no one I ever went to for help had an answer for me or even a tiny bit of direction. They just did the same verbal tap dance that the last pastor did and then pointed me back to those few verses on how to function better in my role as a wife. Forgive and submit and respect your husband, but never about real authentic friendship when it's in a one flesh relationship. And what's interesting is that Jesus never said, hey women, any of these relationship verses only apply to you as long as you don't get married. If you do get married, well, you don't need to read them or study any of those verses on how to relate to one another because you don't need them. Just fulfill your functional role as a wife by reading Ephesians 5, verse 22, verse 24, 33b, Colossians 3, 18a, 1 Corinthians 7, 3b, and 1 Corinthians 7, 4 a. You don't need to feel or think or discern evil or guard your heart anymore. And that massive amount of emotions and feelings that I put inside your estrogen, just pretend you don't feel them anymore. No, he didn't say that. You know what he did say. All scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, and for training in righteousness so that the man of God may be complete and equipped for every good work. Is it too much of a stretch to see the connection between 2 Timothy 3 to where God says, when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing? And when he said it's not good, that man is alone? Could every good work from 2 Timothy 3 include the idea that his masculinity should be doing the work of nurturing femininity? I don't think it's too much of a stretch. Those verses, the ones I mentioned earlier about angry men and all those other ones that are regularly applied to every other relationship within the body of Christ are removed from a wife and replaced with only the verses that specifically mention marriage and the ones that talk about forgiveness. When a woman becomes a wife in the eyes of the shepherds of Christendom, it seems like she ceases to be a feminine creature who's a sister in Christ with them. They see her as a hairless, weaker brother in Christ. They don't see her as a woman. There's a reason the shepherds replace the relationship verses that specifically talk about marriage. It makes it easier and more straightforward for husbands. But if you apply the marriage verses on top of all those relationship verses, instead of replacing them, there's an awkward tension that surfaces for a man. The weight of femininity within a marriage will reveal what kind of man he is, difficult or dangerous. Few want to acknowledge, must much less embrace this third option for their sisters. And I say few as a generosity out of all the churches and denominations that I ever talked to or attended, even a divorce recovery program that's touted by evangelical churches did not embrace this third option. They told me that Jesus would have remained friends, even if he couldn't make the marriage work. That we still need to set an example of love and forgiveness within the body of Christ. That is categorically not true. First, the program is called Divorce Care, and it is demonic. Not because I disagree or agree with divorce. I just completely disagree with how it's handled on both sides of the fence. And I don't want to go down that rabbit hole because that's not the purpose of this video. Second, that's the opposite of what Jesus demonstrated to us. Jesus didn't remain friends with toxic people that didn't repent. When the Pharisees sinned against him, he never went back to them to prove he was really the Messiah and they were wrong. He never went back 
to one, not one Pharisee or scribe, in order to recover, restore, or reconcile. After his death and resurrection, there was separation from them. Until Jesus ascended, he kept his distance from them. He only appeared to people who were repentant. All the shepherds in Christendom are withholding authentic care, true tending, and real feeding of lambs in the flock. The care and tending necessary to empower and free, and in some cases even save the lives of their sisters. This is the very option that a woman, the weaker vessel, needs when she's in the closest relationship that exists within the body. It's only her that it affects, and she's the only one who sees it. This third option is what would expose intimate abuse of covert narcissists, not just within marriages, but also within churches. It's the shepherds that won't teach on exposing all the wolves, goats, and terrors within the churches. Instead, they've put on blinders to narrow their focus to what is easily visible. The few verses that actually reference marriage And this has only given us the incomplete, narrowed view of marriage. The idea that marriage only exists in the two roles of a husband and wife. They've removed the actual friendship that had started between a brother and sister in Christ before they got married. Gave it a new name, marriage, but the friendship of the one flesh relationship has been replaced with functional activities delineated within each role. Not being taught the whole truth of marriage makes us spiritually inept. And that might not be a dangerous condition for most wives, although it's certainly a limiting and stifling view of marriage for them. Understanding a truth that's incomplete never really helps anyone. But for wives who are married to wolves in sheep's clothing, churches are twisting the Bible to the point of hobbling the personal agency of a woman after she becomes a wife. It becomes impossible for her to defend herself with God's own word. That's how Satan uses God's word in strategy against us. He was successful with Adam, but not with Jesus. Unless you stop listening to the false teaching on marriage, the shepherds of Christendom will keep you in the dark about the power and purpose of your feminine heart. If you turn away from their blindness and reach for God alone, he will take your hand so you can begin a healing journey that will lead you out of your own personal Egyptian bondage. Unless God alone frees you, just like he did with the nation of Israel, you will continue to be prey for the wolf that you married. As your body is consumed by the shepherds to fatten themselves, please read Ezekiel 34. God loves you, sister. You are his daughter, and he will rescue you.